Oh my goodness, unable to connect to the internet. Uh, okay, here we go, guys. So now we'll uh, join with the phone and we'll uh, continue with our live stream. I hope you all join back so you can um, see the tour. We're looking at the front of the garden. This is the front of the garden. All right, hello from Disco Monster. Disco Monster, all right, 100. Welcome back, thank you for rejoining us. All right, and we talk about, want to make sure that we have foundation plants in our garden to get that four season interest. So at the front here, we have this uh, beautiful Italian cypress, tall, statuesque, uh, evergreen. Um, we also have, for the winter especially, we have a, a, gar a camellia, yeah, that's a camellia that we have there. And the camellia flower in winter time. So we'll have not only the green leaves, but also some flower in the winter time. We have some gardenia. These are jubilation gardenia, which are highly fragrant. And I have three of them on this side. That's Jubilation Gardenia. Actually, we have two right here. Um, we have some Lantana. As, and we talk about the Lantana, that the rabbits don't like Lantana. And you can get Lantana in many different color. Here, this one is uh, yellow and white. But we also, on the other side, we have red and yellow. And they come in a plethora of color okay we also have daylily which finished blooming now but these beauty right here these are called silosia silosia and in the garden here we have two type of silosia we have this one with a narrow spike and then we have the other one around here. We have more of a flat tip. See those here? And this flat tip one, I got this one in South Korea when I was serving there in um, 2013. I brought the seed back and I keep it. And now I can put it in my garden. And as we said on the other side, tend to uh, have the same type of plant. This tall Italian cypress. We have the gardenia, more silosia, and lantana. Here is the red and yellow lantana that we have. You have to rejoin. Okay, here we have autumn gold, which is a ginkgo biloba. A ginkgo biloba is called autumn gold. Ginkgo biloba, also called maiden hair. And I said when the uh, builders build the house, the two trees they put in the front was this one right here. And on the other side, they put this one, the two maple trees <clears throat> to the front we have catmint and you can see the bees just love the catmint and I plant the catmint right between the boxwood And these boxwood are wintergreen boxwood. More gardenia for that fragrance in the evening when they're blooming. When you walk past to come right here in the garage, you get the fragrance of the gardenia. Remember, I made these uh, two pots right here. After this, of the uh, scotch moss, 
I show you how I did that in this basket. The leftover I put in this uh, clay pot. And now we're trying to get more started. So all I did was uh, take some out of the bigger pot here, out of this pot. I take some out the center there and I put in this little plastic and start in more moss. So it's just a different way of gardening, not just flowers all the time, but you can use moss also. And this is Scotch moss. Hydrangea, endless summer, hydrangea. Hydrangea like part sun. These hydrangea in the front here get about 10, 11, they start getting that sun and then they get the brutal sun all afternoon. <laughs> so you can see that they are a bit burnt, but they're still surviving, still surviving. Nice, beautiful bloom, you can see there. As these dry a little bit more, I'll just cut the head off and then um, more hydrangea will rebloom, okay? Japanese maple. Crimson Queen. It's a beautiful specimen here, right at the front. Crimson Queen. More hydrangea. And this topiary is a juniper. A juniper topiary and it's a mint julep mint julep juniper mint julep juniper in a spiral topiary okay right on the porch we have in the pot here Laura Petalum weeping pixie of course, beside there is a croton. We have another Italian cypress right here at the front, right beneath the flag. Italian cypress is not too close uh, because the Italian cypress have shallow roots. They have shallow roots, so they shouldn't damage the foundation of the house. So they are very safe to plant close to any building. In the back, we have ivory pr prints. And then these are the Japanese holly. Japanese holly. And I got these with the house. We have some aster and another one right over there. And behind it, this beauty right here is a Daphne, Daphne Odoro. Daphne, they also flower in the winter time and they're very fragrant. Does cat mint draw cat to your garden, to your yard? Okay, does the cat mint draw cats to the garden? Jacqueline does. Okay, cats love cat mint, hence the name. I don't really have any problem. Maybe it's because it's in the front here where a lot of cats don't actually come and nibble or just wallow in the cat mints. Okay, maybe if I had it in the back, they would have. My neighbor's cat come over but they usually stay in the backyard. I've never seen them in the front. Jackie Chambers, she says Okay, welcome back, Jackie. Jackie Chambers. This is a Ane Isop, Ane Isop, which is an agastache. Bees, butterfly, not Ane Isop. Just keep a butterfly there and a big bumblebee. Another crimson queen. 
Japanese maple right here in front of the uh, front porch. The ball shape is the Japanese holly that we have, Japanese holly. And of course the purple spikes that we're looking at and a hyssop. Bees love an aesop. So you have to plant it if you plan on having a pollinator's garden. We have this rose here, it's a David Austin Rhodes. Uh, Munstead wood, Munstead wood. This was a beer root rose that I planted in um, April, in April, and it flower already. Some of the flower fall off, and we can see it's flowering again. And Munstead wood smells very good. This is a beautiful dahlia. And behind it, a dwarf ginkgo biloba called Jehoshaphat. And it's dwarf. You guys know my heartache with peonies, <laughs> right? So these peonies we have here, hopefully next spring, we'll have beautiful peonies flowers. Next question. All right, bounce back. That's your next David Austin Rose, Munstead Wood. Yes, highly fragrant. I love it. And it's dark red. So if you like red roses, of course, that's one to get. If I plant uh, crop in the ground and just really get out of control, Lisa Gomez. All right, Lisa, I'm pretty sure you're in a more tropical area, maybe in the south, like Miami, well, Florida or maybe Arizona, one of those southern states. Um, you can put a croton in the ground, but they're beautiful flowers. We have to keep them indoor. So I have it on the porch here now, but in the uh, winter time, when it starts getting cool, I have to bring those back inside. These are garden flocks right here. And it's a bit early, but here we have our chrysanthemum flowering already. Chrysanthemum flowering. Okay, and it's up as we watch our live broadcast. Our crimson queen. Okay, and from here now, we start what I call the rose garden. And I try to make the serpentine, which is a wavy action. Okay. And I like to use this serpentine because it relaxes the eye, the eyes. Okay, that's a principle I got from Japanese gardening. Okay, it relaxes the eyes. When you look at maybe an Italian garden, where, which is very geometric, a lot of straight lines, it tend to be formal, tend to be rigid. You see all these straight lines, you just want to stand to attention, right? <laughs> right, you don't feel as relaxed. It's like you cannot touch everything. You don't want to walk everywhere. But as you walk through this garden with a serpentine flow, it relaxes the eye. You can relax and just walk through. Okay. This is a JFK hybrid tea rose. And we look at everything that's close to the house first, which are most of my hybrid tea rose. And then we look at the David Austin side. JFK white rose. Okay, we have this small rose here, a little ground cover rose we have here, it's red, I don't know the name of it. These stalks that I have here is the Celosia, and they're big, and they haven't started blooming yet. But most of these are the Celosia that I said, seeds that came from South Korea. Here's an evergreen. A Cryptomeria japonica. And this is called Dragon Prince. On the side here, 
we have lots of lavenders. A great companion plant for roses. This pink one is Arizona. See so it has that pink and yellow. And just for some color, we have some coleus along here. We have dianthus, another peonies behind it. Now we have a flock, fox glove over here. Art maker, art maker for and then we have JFK. another. I have JF, JFK. Did you bloom in May 29th, his birthday? Made, <laughs> made me so happy. Okay, art maker, I'm not sure if. If it bloomed on May 29th, which is JFK's birthday, I know it was blooming for Mother's Day, which because we, we make a video of that. So it could have been blooming on his birthday, which is really cool. Another Italian cypress on this side. We have this big bush here, which is a herb, majarum. Majarum is used for cooking. I love it to flower, to grow and to flower. It have our yellow flowers, which I cut it back already, so it should be putting on the second flushes flower pretty soon. A red rose here, Mr. Lincoln. Very fragrant rose. It's a, uh, mm, smells amazing, Mr. Lincoln dark red velvety highly fragrant we have another herb rue which can be used in a tea which we use a lot another peonies majarum there we have more lavender and Mr. Lincoln roses, hybrid tea roses. We have our garden phlox here, which we made a video of when we were uh, planting these garden phlox along here. This one is called Pink Flame. I got some marigold. They're tiny, but they're there, hopefully to help ward off the Japanese beetles. For my trellis here, I have two David Austin rows. On the right side is Bathsheba, and on the left side is Lady of Shalat. They're both very fragrant rows. And as a companion plant for these, I have Clematis. They're both blue Clematis, I don't know the name of it. I just buy it at uh, Lowe's. It says flooring plant. <laughs> you know? So, Lady of Shalot. That's some of the problem when you buy like from Lowe's Home Depot because they mass produce things. The labels get fall off. Sometimes they mislabel things. So I don't know what the name of that um, Clematis is. More lavender, garden phlox, and of course, foxglove. And in the video, we talk about companion plant for roses. We say one of the reasons we try to hide the beer legs, as we call them, of the roses. So there, as we come down here, we can see, trying to hide the beer legs of the roses. More flux, a marigold. This yellow flowers is beautiful. I don't know what it is. I buy a mixed bag of seeds. It says wildflower. 
I just sprinkle it around. Some make it, some didn't. This yellow flowers is one of those that made it. I'm not sure what it is. If you guys look at it carefully. All right, thank you, Bees Alexander. Loving the color combination that we have going on here. And these just start blooming. Crocosmia, Crocosmia. I plant these from the corm. And um, they came out looking very good. Crocosmia. As you can see, kind of look like an iris. The, the plant itself but of course once you start flowering it's no iris that's crocosmia this rose double delight highly fragrant rose this one is olympiad we have two olympiad right along here and this other one over here right in here another double delight and all these I try to get a sea of aster, a sea of aster. Some started blooming and they start blooming from now till fall. So we'll have flush of bloom all the way along here. These blue or purple, different shade of blue, of aster, so New England aster, these. And then we have this toke aster, these. Does your coleus bloom all year and PA is this an annual? Yes, my coleus are also annual. Um, they haven't started flowering yet. We don't grow them for the flower. We grow them for the leaves. The beauty is in the leaves. But um, they're annual. Here we have another topiary. This is a dwarf Alberta spruce. And that will take us right by the back porch. By the back porch, we'll start the pollinator's garden with our guardian of the garden, goddess Athena, the god of war and protector of the garden. Hi to Heartmaker Mom. <laughs> she loved the garden. Thank you so much. These are pineapple sage, which I plant because they grow very tall to provide some protection for the goddess behind. <laughs> this beauty we have here is a red bulb, red bulb, red bud, red bud. And this one is called Ruby Falls, Ruby Falls red bud. In the springtime, it is very dark red. But in the summer, you see it's fading a bit from red to more green. Ruby Falls, red bud. This rose is called Pretty Lady. It's a floribunda. Very fragrant, very fragrant. The last time I had the video, I couldn't remember the name. Pretty lady. Ia Eckerman says, Love the pineapple sage. Look at this crocosmia. Beautiful, beautiful. And crocosmia are hummingbird magnet. I'm surprised I don't see any right now. But uh, earlier this morning, and especially in the evening, the hummingbirds are out. You walk by here, just hear zoom, zoom by your head as the hummingbird pass, trying to get the crocosmia. And later on, the pineapple sage will be flooring another magnet for hummingbird. Underneath it, we have more coleus. Okay, let me go around this side so you can see the coleus. And then Russian sage. Russian sage are also great in pollinators garden. You brush against it, the leaf, release that minty, kind of like a lavender, the same kind of smell like a lavender, butterflies, bees, love. Some people, they say they love coleus. Most people, they say they love roses. Okay, a lot of people love coleus, some love roses. We have more Russian sage here. 
sometimes they can grow very tall and then they flop over it's okay you cut it back if you start flopping over that will just encourage new growth all right so we're going to go along the second part now which i call my david austin rose side okay some questions you are yes. the reason i planted my um my cantonentis with my aid and climbing roses all right and i always love it good good cantonentis is a great you. companion so, plant so smart <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah so cantonentis is a great companion plant for the rose the color is spectacular all right so we have the david austin rose that we planted uh, two potted plant on this side we had the uh, golden celebration which is this one and the poet's wife okay the golden celebration flower already and getting new bulb new buds ready to reflower New buds coming up. What's your growing zone? My growing zone is 7B. 7B. This is a floribunda, a beautiful yellow floribunda. But I forget the name of it. I forget the name. I'm going to have to research it again to get the name. I should have the tag someplace in the garage. I just need to dig to find it. You know, when I started gardening, I didn't like to have the tags in the garden because I think it makes the garden look unkept. But then I start forgetting the names because as you start planting more and more flowers, you tend to forget the names of them. And that's <laughs> when you guys ask the name, I'm at a loss for words, you know? So from now on, I try to keep the tags, keep it in the garden. And as I pass it, I can re remember it every time I pass until I can know the name, okay? <clears throat> This is a red dragon, Japanese maple, red dragon. Crocosmia, just lean over in it and just make it beautiful. It look as if the red dragon is actually blooming, but that's a crocosmia leaning in the red dragon. Beautiful Japanese maple. This is another pineapple sage with a chartreuse color, as opposed to the other one, which is just green. Russian sage and more coleuses. Here we have one of the coleus. We we're asking about the bloom. Uh, if you'll get it, there we go on that coleus. But the blooms are pretty much inconspicuous because you don't grow you don't grow them for the bloom, but for the leaves. The port's wife, David Austin. That soft pink. That's soft pink, that's soft yellow, I should say. Soft yellow color. Port's wife, David Austin Rose. These two flower bundes here, midnight in Paris. They're midnight in Paris. Then we have a blood good Japanese maple. All right, you love Goddess Athena. Thank you so much. <laughs> She's a protector of the garden. Underneath the blood good, we have more garden flux and a few coleus. Nice color beneath the blood good. Where did you get your David Austin roses? Online. I get them online. DavidAustinRoses.com. You have to put the S at the end. DavidAustinRoses.com. This is Bathsheba, David Austin Rose. Again, highly fragrant with the clematis. And I like the combination of the clematis with the rose. That dark blue, purple, marv, whatever color you call that, along the um, apricot, it's beautiful. A lot of my roses, I plant herbs. Because as I said, a companion plant, herbs attract good insects, like aphids, correction, like ladybugs to eat the bad insects like your aphids. 
aphids feed on roses. That's the soft, tender shoots of the roses. Okay, they feed on that. And as they feed, they leave that sticky, sugary paste. And that's where your mildew and all of that fungus would uh, come in. Okay, but ladybugs eat the aphids. So it's good to have herbs which will attract your ladybugs. Herbs like sage, culinary sage. I let all of mine flower, get a purple color. And you can see in our earlier video, it was like a sea of blue. Salvia, I think this one is the Americana. Nice blue spikes also. Lemon balm. Lemon balm is highly fragrant. It have a lemon scent. All right, or David Austin Rose. This one is Abraham Darby. Trying to I can get one upright so you can see it. All right, there we go. Abraham Darby. It's a soft apricot color. Crocosmia hummingbird plant. Could you spell it? Say Barbara Downey. The Crocosmia. Mm -hmm. C R O C O S M I A. Crocosmia. Okay. This uh another David Austin Rose. This one another Abraham Darby. Get a good picture of it. Beautiful, highly fragrant. David Austin roses tend to flop. So you can either tie them up, put them in basket, or it might sound cruel, prune them back. If they get too tall and leggy, the bloom's just gonna flop over. So you want to keep it short, three to four feet. So the, the uh, stems will be strong enough to hold the flower upright, like these. Jacqueline Bell says she's in 9A, a plant for Contrast Florida. Mm -hmm. Crocosmia grow year round. Give it seven colors. Crocosmia grow all year round in Florida. Oh, that's in awesome. 9A. In a 9A. Okay, my 7B, they die back in the winter and they'll come back. So they're a perennial. This is a Thomas A. Beckett, David Austin Rose. We have some cone flower. These are double cone flower these are called pink delight pink double delight pink double delight what do you get your david austin online? i got the david austin rose online davidaustinroses.com pink double delight echinacea okay this is a Basco Bell, David Austin Rose. Uh, it's pretty much all spent, need to be pruned. But there we have a new bloom coming. Another one that we plant this year from Beirut Rose in about April. You can check back at the, for the video, planting Beirut David Austin Roses. This is uh, Jubilee celebration. It's a pink rose, highly fragrant, beautiful. Here we have a tree rose, which is an intrigue rose. Intrigue rose. It's a pretty much a floribunda. It's called intrigue. Okay, art, art maker love the lemon balm. Yes, beautiful, put the green. In water and tea, great flavor. Oh yeah, you can use it as tea. Mm -hmm. And also in lemonade.
the Japanese maple here, Kotonaito. Kotonaito, Japanese maple. Kotonaito will tolerate some sun in zone 7B. They say it might go to a in partial sun, eight or nine. But so far I survived my 7B out in sun. Kotonaito. Green leaf, finely cut you, maple. Do you dedicate that ten flowers? The first bloom you look really nice too. <laughs> Somebody like the spent blooms and some of the flower? Do you deadhead it? I deadhead most of my roses. I try to oh, no. deadhead it as uh, quickly as I can. Mm -hmm. But on some of the um, other plants like yarrow or some echinacea, I keep those because those produce seed and um, the birds, especially the goldfinches, love that. Did you deadhead it? So yes, I deadhead some, but most of the herbs, I just leave them up. Carla was asking that. Thank you for questioning that, Carla. All right, here we have on the echinacea, bees, skipper butterfly. This is a baptisa that I cut back hard this year because they were, after they flower, they were too tall and overpowering the rose. And I have this Baskerbell rose in here. So I have to cut them back hard. But see, they come back looking very good. Hopefully I might get, I'll see if I get a second flush of bloom before winter. This is the second Baskerbell. Any plant, white roses? What is the name of it? Thanks. Dolo, Dolo M. Dolo M, my white rose is JFK as hybrid tea rose. And um, the David Austin rose is Susan Williams Ellis. Susan Williams Ellis as white roses. But I have lots of soft pink and soft yellow, which pretty much fade in my sunlight to pretty much white. Don't forget everybody to hit like. Okay, remember? As you're watching the video, go ahead, hit like. This is another cryptomeria. It's called Golden Promise. Golden Promise. Cryptomeria Japonica, Golden Promise. This is a dwarf and will maintain this uh, round shape and the golden color all year. And I got this from uh, Mr. Maple, mrmaple.com. Another question? Okay, love Athena. This is the other white rose. Susan Williams Ellis. Uh, most of the flower is spent, but you can see more is coming right there. Okay. <clears throat> the lilies finished blooming. I'm not sure if I should cut my lilies back or I should just leave them up just like a tulip to send that energy down to the bulb for next year. So if you guys know the answer to that, please, uh, please just drop a, li a line down below or talk to me about it later on. Do I cut lilies back or just let them stay there, uh, get more energy in the leaves to send towards the uh, bulb for it to be bigger for next year. What was the rose spray that you used on your roses? The rose spray I use is a three-in-one rose spray. Uh, it's by Artho. Uh, yeah, we'll link it below. We'll link it below. It's a three-in-one spray. If I have the Japanese beetle on it, yes, I'll just go ahead and uh, use neem oil. I have another Cryptomira japonica, black dragon. I'm not sure what's going on with it. It was looking nice and green, but it just take on this real brown appearance. You know, it's not dead yet because they're still green. So I'm not sure what to do to this one. Maybe it's getting too much sunlight but it's a Cryptomira japonica, 
um, black dragon. Unified. We'll have to try and rescue this one. Unified ants will use white roses, wildflower times. It says unified ants will use white roses. Oh, ants? Mm -hmm. Okay, who asked? Wildflower times. Wildflower time asks if I have hands on my roses. No. Roses. On the white roses, no, I never really notice any ants on the roses. Like I said, aphids, yes, every now and then. But Japanese uh, beetle, yes, but never ants. Welcome, Barbara, doing from the essay. All right, welcome, Barbara. This is Jude the Obscure, one of my favorite Which David one? Austin Rose. Jude the Obscure. Smells amazing. And the Jude the Obscure is surrounded by echinacea. And these are called tomato soup. Tomato soup. That deep red, crimson color of these echinacea tomato soup. Wildlife Town said, Cut your lilies, they are making seed which are sweet. Okay, so we have one of the subscribers just said, Cut back the lily. Wildflower times, thank you so much. Cut back the lily because they're just making seeds, which you're right. Because if we go back to the lily and look, you see they have that swollen top, which we think just making the seeds. So it's sending all the energy into making seed. So you don't want that. Okay, see. Barbara the UP units attract So we'll cut back these lilies. Uh, so it don't waste energy producing seeds. Or uh, if my peonies attract ants, my, <laughs> sorry to say, my peonies attract nothing. They haven't flowered in two years. Hopefully next year they'll flower and then we'll see what the flower attract, ants or what, or bees or whatever. But um, they haven't attracted anything because they haven't flowered. Okay, at the end of my David Austin Rose Garden here, which is actually the beginning, is waterfalls, a Japanese maple waterfalls. Question from Lisa Gomez. She said, no, Lisa Gomez. Start with you. Oh, thank, thank you, Lisa. Thank you for joining. And for everybody who joined this live broadcast, thank you for your patience in switching from the computer to the phone so we can walk around the garden and do a tour. So there we have it, guys. A live look at my floor as it is right now. I don't have any time to edit or anything because this is all live. So whatever you see is whatever is growing right now and flowering right now. <laughs> and this is my garden today, July, what, 25th? Whatever the, the 25th of July, mm -hmm. this is how it is right now. Annette, thank you so much. Hello, Webster, wife and daughter. I have a question. I have four flocks. Uh, did, can you catch that one? Sure. Talk about the flocks. It move away. Do you prefer pine straw or mulch? Pine straw on the hill. I like the pine straw on the hill. Around the garden bed, I rather the wood chip mulch. Close to the house, I use uh, cypress. Cypress mulch because termite don't like, I don't know if it is smell or what of the cypress. I think it's the cypress itself that repels uh, termites. So the termites don't go munching on your wood. So you won't attract termites around your house if you use the uh, cypress mulch closer to the house. Away from the house, I just use any wood chip. Any disease, if you get the chance to answer, it is really appreciated. All right, Annette. All right, four flocks. That's uh, sometime well during the day. Any ideas? Okay. Uh, the flocks, I mean, it's summertime now. So in the daytime, in the heat of the day, most of your flowers will, heat, will wilt. So if it wilt, just go ahead and water it. That's 
I mean, if you have on the leaves, you start having white spot, it might be um, mold. But if the leaves are still green and beautiful, but it's just wilting, then that means it need water. Just go ahead and give it some water. But uh, summertime is when flocks are in full bloom. You know, this is the peak time for flocks, hydrangea, you know, crocosmia, peak time in the summer. So just make sure we give them enough water to keep them hydrated. We need water, the flowers do too, okay? Okay, Rita Hoffa, do you prefer pine straw or mulch for your roses? Yes, and I, I answered that before, okay. said a pine straw for the hill, but mulch for the rest of the garden bed. I use mulch for the front also because uh, I just find it more attractive at the front there around my trees and in the front flower bed uh, no real purpose just for aesthetic reason I keep that in the front and for our uh, Prince Billy says uh, oh I see what you're saying wildflower times I cut the top but leave the foliage. Okay, so you go ahead and deadhead your wildflower, Prince Billy. I said uh, most of these wildflower set seed, which the birds will like, so I tend to leave that up. Early in the season, I might cut them back. Just for again, aesthetic reason for it to look attractive, but later on, I just leave it, leave it to set seed so that the birds can also feed, because I like to have birds in the garden. And it says, I water them and they seem fine, but I wonder if I'm doing something wrong. No, Annette, I would say that you're not doing anything wrong. <laughs> Just water them. He said, no white spot. They are also not blooming. If they haven't bloomed all year, it could be that you fertilize it too much. Like early in the year, you might fertilize it too much. So it's sending all the energy into leaf production. So it have lots of leaf, it's just bushy, but no flower. That could be a reason why your flocks don't flower. So make sure you fertilize it early, very early in the season and don't fertilize again so we can produce more flowers and less leaves. Okay, see another question here, Barbara says god bless you and your family thank you barbara art maker everything is beautiful thanks to your wife and daughter too appreciate it so much okay and it says ha ah, <laughs> possibly okay rita do you know of an hydrangea that grows in full sun okay full sun is a, it would be relative to your zone but if you're in my zone a 7b that would be um little lime or limelight Hydrangea or little lime will do okay in sun. In um, zone six and below, of course, they'll do okay in sun. But for a 7B, uh, give them some shade. Preferably sun would be morning sun, afternoon shade. But little lime and limelight hydrangea will do okay in sun in zone 7, 7B. Other hydrangea, endless summer. Again, you should give them some shade, but I have mine in the sun. They burn a lot. Some of the leaves get scorched and the floor itself, uh, but the plant will survive and keep flowering. That dead hydrangea bloom, just, uh, you can cut it off and more blooms will come and just keep it watered, especially in the summertime, keep your hydrangea because, of course, even the word hydra, water, so hydrangea needs lots of water. So keep it well watered and um, your hydrangea will survive. Okay, guys, so that's a live look at the rose garden that we said we'll look at today. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We're just trying to switch from computer to the phone and we had to do that twice so i appreciate your patience you like the video give it a thumbs up 
please share it with your friends and family. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell that you can be notified when new videos are produced and released. And you can join us on Instagram at my.therapy.garden. Okay, so as we put, do uh, the finishing touch on today's live broadcast, just to make a wide pan of my garden. From the rose garden to the front. And I'll just get out the sun, sit on the porch. And you guys, if you have more questions, we'll continue answering more questions. All right, so thank you again for staying with us. Okay, guys, so we'll just answer a few more questions. <laughs> I have it this way. All right, so what we have. All right, Mrs. Eyes 512. Okay, so we just want to thank everybody who joined us in the video today. Jackie Chambers, Disco Monster, Joycelyn Bell, Shelley Laurie, Prince Billy, Art Maker Forever. Thank you so much for joining us and for being patient. Senora Trump, Lisa Gomez, Anna Ruth Flagg, uh, J Nutting Y N Y C K Moore and oh Shanitra Howard bounce back Ia Ackerman thank you so much for joining us uh, Jesse Neal. <laughs> Dwight Williams, thank you for joining us, Dwight, from Jamaica. I appreciate you taking the time. Shawnee Elgin, thank you. Joycelyn Bell. Barbara Downey, Art Maker Forever. Angie P, thank you so much for joining us. Anna Getu, thank you, Anna. Um, Carla Palacios. Thank you for joining us. Dolo M, Wildflower Times, Rita Owl, thank you for joining us. Uh, Barbara Downey, okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your uh, morning and spend some time in the therapy garden. All right, so, Thank you guys, <laughs> Mrs. Sally, yes. Get yourself a big glass of water. I'll definitely do that. <laughs> and some brewski too, right? Get some cold one. <laughs> some Bud Light Lime, huh? <laughs> Excuse me. Okay guys, so I thank you all for joining us in this uh, second live broadcast. Um, Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for supporting My Therapy Garden. Thank you for your questions, your comments. You know, a lot of times when I don't have the answer, you guys provide the answer and I really appreciate that. And that's what we need, a gardening family, okay? I don't know all the answers, but we have a lot of professional gardeners out there uh, supporting me. A lot of professional gardeners, you know, sending tips, advice, you know, um, how to grow flowers and how to make it better. Because as I said, you know, 
I'm not professionally trained as a gardener. I'm not a, I'm not a horticulturist. I'm just a retired soldier who suffered from PTSD and is using gardening as a therapy for my PTSD. So as I learn, I pass on all that information to you. So if you guys um, have any other ideas in how to make this channel better, I welcome it. I thank you for your time. And uh, from my family to yours, have a great day. God bless you all. And um, we'll keep playing in the dirt to take away our hurt. So from my family to yours, happy gardening. Have a great day. God bless, guys. And bye for now. If I didn't answer any question, you can still keep writing. Okay? So I just thank everybody for joining us. Okay? Uh, thank you again, Barbara Downey. This is to it. Uh, Picuta Moore, thank you, Prince Billy, bounce back, and at 95, thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. Size, have a great day. Ia Ackerman, I thank you for joining us from Sweden. Uh, bounce back, Kiante McBean, Simple Life, no, Simple Lala One, Rita All, Shawnee Elgin, thank you so much. Okay, guys. Uh, remember, give a thumbs up and share with your friends and family. Okay, thanks again. Read it all. Art maker, Wildflower Times, Lisa Gomez, thank you to everybody. I couldn't have done this without your love and support, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And in this pandemic again, just remember, if you're going into crowd, wear your mask. Okay? Uh, keep your social distance and we can maintain social distance without being socially distanced okay and th this is one way we can do it online as we meet greet and talk about gardening okay guys again this is webster we're playing the dirt let me take away my hurt thank you god bless you have a great day bye now guys bye bye